What is the Bible? What is it worth? Basic instructions before leaving earth. Life is full of struggles and it is hard. But we are made in the image of God. Lord, I have to praise you to the moon and back. I don't see anything wrong with that. Lord, it's me you help. Lord, it's me you kept. Lord, it's me you move. Lord, it's me you grieve. Lord, it's me you touch. I love you so much. Oh, my Lord, I have to say thank you. Open my eyes. What do I see? Have I inventoried my life lately? Welcome to Holy Bible Study and Discussion with Jerry. Oh, Lordy, Lordy, to God goes the glory. God goes the glory, the glory, glory. <laughs> All right, all right, welcome to Holy Bible Study and Discussion with Jerry. Our mission, to provide the knowledge that will train sisters and brothers in Christ to spread God's love and create disciples. Our vision, to share all resources that will aid in the knowledge necessary for the building of God's kingdom. The adversary does not know what to do with those who possess integrity. We are not human beings on a spiritual journey. On the contrary, we are spiritual beings on a human journey. With that being said, we will open this Holy Bible study session up with prayer, so please join in. O Holy Eternal Father, Son, Holy Spirit, it is once again that we come unto you as humble as we know how, realizing that you are the great Creator the creator of the universe and all that dwells within. You are the maker of man and woman, the center of our lives. You are the one who gives us the breath of lives. We confess our indiscretions and continue to ask for your guidance to help us to work through them, asking you to strengthen not what we have lost, but to strengthen what remains. Thank you for your continued graces and your continued mercies. We pray these things in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. All right. Blessings to all. Welcome again. I am Jerry. This portion of our study covers creation of man. Now, we will see that God separates plant life and animal life from mankind. And he says, let us make man in our image. This creature is of great interest to us because they happen to be our great, great grandsister. And um, this means that you and I are cousins. In uh, distant cousins, that is. But the whole human family is related. Man was made last of all creatures. This was both an honor and a favor to him. Yet man was made the same day that the beasts were. His body was made of the same earth with theirs. And while he is in the body, he inhabits the same earth with them. God forbid that by indulging the body and the desires of it, we should make ourselves like the beast that perish. Man was to be a creature different from all that had been hitherto made. Flesh and spirit, heaven and earth must be put together in him. God said, let us make man. Man, when he was made, was to glorify the God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Into that great name we are baptized, for to that great name we owe our being. It is the soul of man that especially bears God's image. Man was made upright. His understanding saw divine things clearly and truly. There were no errors or mistakes of his knowledge. His will consented at once, and in all things to the will of God. His affections were all regular, and he had no bad appetites or passions. His thoughts were easily brought and fixed to the best subjects. Thus, holy, thus happy, were our first parents in having the image of God upon them. But how is this 
image of God upon man defaced. Hmm? May the Lord renew it upon our souls by his holy grace. All right, our scriptures will be coming from Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 through 31, King James Version. Verse 26, And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Verse 27, So God created man in his own image, in the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Verse 28, And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Alright, verse 29, And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for me. Verse 30, And to every beast of the earth, and every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life. I have given every herb for meat, and it was so. Verse 31, And God saw everything that he made, that he had made, and behold, it was very good, and the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Now, it is time for our verse breakdown, starting with Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let him have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Alright, now right here, something new and significant is happening, as God now speaks in a new manner. Up to this point, his words on each new day have begun with, let there be, or let thee. But now, his creation declaration is more reflective in nature. Let us make man in our image, after our likeness. Alright, now the last stage in the progress of creation being now reached, God said, let us make man. Words which show a peculiar peculiar uh, importance of the work to be done. All right, now the uh, formation of, the, of a creature who was to be God's representative, clothed with the authority and rule as visible head and monarch of the world. Many new covenant believers have understood these plural pronouns as Trinitarian in nature, but the original audience lacked their revelation we have to uh, understand them that way. All right now, the Old Testament is essentially silent to the triune nature of God. It is the New Testament record that ultimately reveals God as being three in one. That record would make it possible for believers in the first century and later to con contemplate a plurality in the oneness of God's essence. That leaves open a, the question of how the earliest readers interpret the plural pronouns. All right, now one proposal is that God is speaking to angelic beings in his heavenly court. Another view is that the plurals are to be understood as a plural of majesty, by which God refers to the fullness of his power and identity. And the uh, illustration of this type of plural is the quotation, we are not amused, supposedly uttered by Queen Victoria after hearing a story that was not as funny as the storyteller thought it ought to be. <laughs> um, an enduring issue is determining what it, what it means to be created in God's image after his likeness. 
All right, now that the words image and likeness refer to different things is unlikely. First, there is no between, um, there is no and between image and likeness in the original text. Second, the same Hebrew words translated image and likeness appear in Genesis chapter 5 verse 3 to refer to the same thing. Thus, the two words should be seen as synonyms combined to add intensity. And it is uh, problematic to identify the image of God with one of God's specific qualities. God is complex, so his image must also be complex. But we are able to get a better grasp uh, if we approach the topic from two angles. All right, those of form and content. The form of the image of God is personhood. This speaks to the intellectual, volitional, moral, creative, and religious capa- uh, capacities that animals do not have. As God exercises his creative will, so also human beings alone uh, among earth's creatures have the ability to think of complex things that doesn't exist and then take deliberate steps to make them a reality. All right, now this was a peculiar peculiar uh, distinction. The value attached to which appears in the words uh, being twice mentioned. All right, now, and well, the question is, and in what did this image of God consist? All right, not in the erect form of uh, features of man, not in his intellect, for the devil and his angels are, in the respect, far superior. All right, not in his immorality, for he has not, like God, as past as well as future eternity of being but in moral dispositions of his soul commonly called original righteousness All right now as the new creation is only a restoration of his image the history of the one throws light on another and right now and we are informed that it is renewed after the image of God in knowledge righteousness and true holiness A beaver may go through a sequence of steps to make a dam, but stacking a pile of sticks is not the same as building a hospital. Alright, now content for its part speaks to relationship with God in terms of servants and um, fellowship, and relationship to the world in terms of dominion and stewardship. It is the form part of the image that makes the content part of the image possible. Alright, regarding the servant aspect, the portrayal of God in the creation narrative highlights a certain correspondence between humans and God that allows us to have a relationship with Him. God bids us to rule over His creation, a task elegantly described as having dominion. Okay, now in the quotation, and let them have dominion, God gave Him dominion over the earth and I do not think this means that God made him a sort of glorified gardener in the Garden of Eden. Adam had tremendous authority given to him. Regarding the dominion part of the content part of the image that's addressed in our next verse, we will find out a little later that God says to him he is to do certain things relative to uh, this creation that God has given to him. Now, David will reflect further on this centuries later in Psalms chapter 8, verses 6 through 8. In creating, the Lord worked and exercised dominion, and he invites us to participate with him in exercising that dominion as we ourselves work. This is an issue of stewardship. All right, now the first question that arises is, how was man created? Hmm. Well, the next chapter will tell us that, but for now, we'll move on to Genesis chapter 1 verse 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. 
right? The uh, image of God in which humanity is created includes male and female. We have here just a simple fact of the creation of man. Right now, that we exist in community reflects the communal nature of God that we see taught more clearly in the New Testament. The Father, Son, and Spirit are one, yet they are clearly distinct persons. And though male and female together form one humanity, there is a clear God-intended distinction between male and female. God's statement identifying us as being in His image points to humanity's exalted place. Some students also see the triple usage of the verb created as significant. The word in the original language being translated thus occurs only eight times between Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 and chapter 5 verse 1. <coughs> and fully half of those are connected with the final and most significant aspect of creation. The creation of God's image bearer us um, three times here and once in chapter 5 verse 1. It is difficult to overstate the significance of the image of God with Judeo-Christian ethics. All right, without the brief belief um, that humans are morally endowed creatures of morality, of a more I'm, I'm sorry, of a morally good God, there is nothing um, to ensure the dignity and value of any and every person born or unborn, healthy or ill. Whatever value humans possess comes from the sovereign creator. Alright. To whom we are accountable and responsible. Alright. The physical, economic, social and cultural criteria by which secular humanism establishes and defends personhood are arbitrary, changing and unreliable. Christians must shape their response to moral issues such as abortion, euthanasia, and racism on the foundation of humanity's value and special status of being made in the image of God. All right, now, the quote, quotation. So God um, created man in his own image. I want to submit to you that this is one of the greatest statements of the word of God. I cannot conceive of anything quite as wonderful as this. What does it mean? Well, I'm glad you asked. Well, man is like God, I think, as a triune. Mankind is physically, mentally, and a spiritually being. Okay, that's three parts. All right, now this puts us right back to the all-important truth which we find in the 11th chapter of Hebrews through faith we understand that the words I mean the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear now that's in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 3 alright now things we see today were made out of things which did not even exist before the creation was made out of nothing God created. This is the tremendous revelation of this chapter. All right, now, moving on to Genesis chapter 1, verse 28. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. All right, now, God's blessing commanded spoken over the uh, that God's blessing command spoken over the humanity reflects what he has already spoken over creatures of the sea and of the sky. It resembles a number of other fruitfulness blessings statements found throughout this book. Right, together these demonstrate that rearing children is an integral part of God's plan for humanity. God desires that the whole earth be inhabited and experience his glory. To the notion of dominion used earlier, God now adds the verb subdue, subdue, 
um, the word is uh, in the original language it appears elsewhere in a positive sense in context and of order and security resulting from the subjugating subjugating of enemies all right yeah, it also occurs in a negative sense of bondage and enslavement all this suggests that the focus is the idea of control all right now those who are granted this control are naturally accountable to god for stewardship in ordering and developing uh, the resources available i know what has come to be called the dominion mandate forms a basis for science and technology it should never be thought a li license for carelessness and abusive use of natural resources. We exercise dominion only as the image or representatives of God in the world, not as creation's owners. Because we, didn't own, we don't own creation. We don't have any right to exploit it in such a way that brings discredit on God. We should exercise the responsibility towards the environment that God expects. God's expectations are different because of subsequent uses anticipated for the resources. The extent to which we are able to exercise this dominion is now limited because of sin. However, Christ, who is the image of the invisible God, has come to the last Adam, has come as the last Adam to achieve dominion. In him, we have put on a new self and are growing into the image and likeness of God. Alright, we put our childish ways behind us and we are now new creatures. Alright, now we see here that God has given to uh, this creature something useful. First, he says to man, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. Alright, we will hear him repeat that. When he creates woman. God seems to be the one who introduced the subject of sex. It is quite interesting that our generation thinks that they made a new discovery when it comes to sex. They feel like they are the Columbus that discovered sex. Uh, know how that story goes. But God mentions it here at the very beginning. In fact. There are four methods that God has used to get mankind into this universe. One was by direct creation, which produced Adam. Second was by indirect creation, which produced Eve through man. All right. The third was by the virgin birth. Um, and this was how Jesus came through the virgin Mary. Mary. And Jesus come into the human family that way. And the fourth way was by natural generation. And that is pretty well known by in our day. Okay, it's like how we got here. Okay, now we have uh, certainly dragged natural generation down to a level that God never intended for it to be. God created man to reproduce. This is a wonderful, glorious truth, and it is not to be made into anything dirty or filthy or anything slimy, you know, just like what's happening today. People are writing dirty, filthy books and calling it literature. They are producing dirty, filthy things and calling it art. Some of the critics are beginning to speak out against this. What we're doing now, spreading the word of God, and we thank the Lord for that you know we stand and you know uh, spreading the good news but it's people fighting you know trying not you know because they don't want to hear it they don't want anybody else to hear it all right now they are saying that what we have long contended that much of what is called art is repulsive and that it is not art at all it is nothing in the world but uh, obscene, obscene, and it is done simply for the almighty daughter, dollar, all of that other stuff is. All right, now, God never intended for sex to be abused in that kind of a way. Now, now God created man in his image. God is 
the essentially personal being and in giving the man an immoral soul he also give him true personality man has a self consciousness he has the power of free choice and he has a distinct moral responsibility he is in the image of god all right now when we look at the quotation be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth god tells man to fill the earth by what reproduction all right and notice that he uses the word replenish that is an interesting word and seems to indicate that this earth has been inhabited before hmm by other creatures well well whatever the creatures were they had disappeared before man was created god also tells man to subdue the earth this i think is the basis of learning and of scientific exploration in our day all right um Let me see. One of the uh, uh, proverbs says this. It says, It is the glory to God to conceal a thing, but the honor of kings is to search out a matter. All right, now that's found in Proverbs chapter 25, verse 2. Um, God hides diamonds way down in the earth, and God also puts treasures down down there where man has to dig for them and i believe that today the same thing is true about knowledge i think it is true about the study of the word of god and that we have to pray and you know uh, and just continue to pray for revelation now god wants us to uh, go into the laboratory of prayer to use the test tube and microscope but unfortunately sometimes unfortunately sometimes man comes out with an atom bomb and he is trying to destroy the human family today all right now the quotation and have dominion is god's instruction to man that's all that is it is god's instruction telling us to have dominion over the earth and over the living creatures All right now Adam was not just a gardener to cut the grass man was created to rule this earth I think that Adam could control the weather just as we control the air conditioners in our homes he ruled this earth this is what we see in the Lord Jesus when he was here on earth he had control over nature he could say to the storm be still and he could feed a multitude of five loaves and two fishes All right, in my opinion, Adam could have done all of that too until the fall of sin. Now, at the fall, he lost all his dominion, everything that God had given him. All right, now let's move on to Genesis chapter 1 verse 29. And God said, "Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed to you it shall be for me all right now the repetition of every highlights the fact that god is the faithful and generous provider of sustenance to both man and animals humans will eat from seed bearing plants and fruit trees and animals will consume every green plant herbs and fruits must be man's food including corn and all products of the earth let god's people cast their care upon him and not be troubled about what they shall eat and what they shall drink he that feeds his birds will not starve his babes all right now after the flood people will receive authority from god to eat animal flesh as well and that'll be it once we get to Genesis chapter 9 verse 3 we'll find a new source of protein okay now from this statement i assume that man was a vegetarian at first and not until after the flood um during noah's time did man become a meat eater all right now we'll move on to Genesis chapter 1 verse 30 and to every beast of the earth and to every fowl of the air and to every living thing that creepeth upon the earth wherein there is life i have given every green herb for meat and it was so 
The crown of God's creation is a new creature, a creature that can sound the heartbeat of its creator. Right? The creature, that creature made male and female, reflects God's own relational rich, richness. The human family is to join God in, on, in the ongoing work of creation. All right, now the earth below and the sky above with all their inhabitants are too beautiful and too good to be left alone. They need a tender care and close attention that only God's favorite creature can give. All right, now Genesis chapter 1 verse 31. And God saw every living thing that he had made and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. God had previously assessed elements of creation as good. Found in Genesis chapter 1 verse 4, verse chapter 10, chapter 12, chapter 18, chapter 21, and chapter 25. He now evaluates his creation in light of the addition of humanity and he pronounces it as very good. This exclamation behold both expenses expr- this explanation behold both expresses God's excitement and invites the reader also to view creation from God's perspective. Now creation before the intrusion of human sin in Genesis chapter 3 fully reflected God's intent. Humanity now awaits the new heaven and the new earth to appear when God's redemptive purposes initiated in the work of Christ are consummated. I know mean, when we come to think about our works, we find our shame, or to our shame, that much has been very bad. When we do our own inventory, but when God saw his work, all was very good. Good for it was all just as the Creator would have it to be. All his works in all places of his dominion blesses him. <clears throat> and therefore, bless thou the Lord, O my soul. Let us bless God for the gospel of Christ. And when we consider his almighty power, let sinners flee from the wrath to come. Uh, if newly created unto the image of God in holiness, um... We should at length enter into the new heavens and the new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Alright, this brings us to the end of chapter 1, and it might be well to make a resume at this point. Alright, and some of the questions, we'll ask this question, what are some of the things we should know here? Well, one of the things is the fact that God mentioned is mentioned here 32 times. The Bible makes no attempt to prove that there is a God. Alright, why not? Well, I'm glad you asked. Because he says, The fool hath said in his heart, There is no God. Found in Psalms chapter 14, verse 1. The Bible is a book written to reveal the spiritual and religious, the redemptive truth. And that comes to us by faith. So we have here the fact that God is the one who created in this first chapter, we see the unity and power of um, the personality of God. This is exactly what Paul wrote in Romans chapter 1 verse 20. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. How are they clearly seen? Mm-hmm. Being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. I say to you very candidly that God has shut you up to faith in himself. Alright, we will notice some other truths in this chapter as we go along and follow through. But, uh, and we'll cover on order, progress, promptness, and perfection as well. Alright, now, um, but for now, this is what creation of man is all about. All right, now with that being said, we will close out with prayer. 
O oh, Holy Eternal Father, Son, Holy Spirit, we ask that you help us to use what we have learned from your word today to allow you to use the things in our lives as your platform. We realize that you are the potter, we are the clay, asking you to form what you have already created as vessels to harvest more vessels. Thank you for your continued grace and mercy. Thank you for your continued hedge of protection, provisions, and redemptive power, and receptive power of your Holy Spirit. It is forever. In the precious name of Jesus the Christ, the Messiah, we pray. Amen. Thank you for tuning in. Please stay tuned for the discussion portion of this show. You can find Holy Bible Study and Discussion with Jerry podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spreaker, Spotify, Idaho, Radio, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, and Audible. You can also find Holy Bible Study and Discussion with Jerry uh on God in Our Lives Every Day.com. That's God in Our Lives Every Day.com. All right, remember to put God first and everything else will follow. And to God goes the glory, the glory, the glory, glory. <laughs>